Hey guys, so I am an educator at Unacademy and you can follow me over there if you are interested to watch videos on basic concepts of chemistry or physical chemistry topics. You can also recommend this to your juniors and to your younger siblings, right? All you need to do is download the Unacademy learning app and watch my videos over there. Now let's just begin with our topic. Very good evening to all of you. Now before I begin with this video, I just want to tell you one thing that this video is going to be very very informative all right i promise you you are not going to waste a single moment of your life if you study if you follow this particular video all right so before i begin i would just be speaking a little slowly because i am still in my lab and um, so that's why i'm not making videos on the whiteboard i myself love to make videos on the whiteboard but uh, due to some restrictions uh, I, I have to make it on my laptop all right now let's just begin so the perkin reaction all right so must many of you might have already studied perkin reaction but i am going to give you very very informative video trust me just watch this video till the end all right uh, so we have an aromatic aldehyde which is over here right uh, this is our aromatic aldehyde and uh, when we add to this aromatic aldehyde uh, any anhydride right it could be acetic anhydride or any any anhydride that we add and we add base uh, what we get is a cinnamic acid derivative. This over here is a cinnamic acid derivative. Uh, so this is our basically uh, Perkin reaction. All right. Now let's move and see an example over here. So we, uh, this is our aromatic aldehyde over here. Or uh, to this aromatic aldehyde, I'm adding acetic anhydride, and I'm getting a cinnamic acid derivative over here. Right. Now there are some uh, disadvantages of this reaction. Though it's a really useful reaction to make cinnamic acid and its derivatives, um, it, uh, it goes through several disadvantages. First of all, it requires a very, very high reaction temperature, all right? around 170 to 200 degrees Celsius. Right? The reaction time is also pretty long. It takes about 8 to 10 hours for this reaction to be uh, completed. Right? It's not very long for organic chemist, but generally these are simple reactions and they should be done in a, in a shorter span of time. All right? And the third thing, third thing is, if I specifically talk about India, in India your acetic anhydride is not easily available. And why is that? So first of all, why is it not easily available? Because uh, to purchase acetic anhydride from, you have to contact the authorized supplier, and it is needed to complete a registration under narcotics department to get a unique registration number. Once you get this unique registration number, only then you can order acetic anhydride, right? So procuring acetic anhydride specifically in India, it's a very, very big problem. All right. And why is that? Now, this is pretty interesting. So this over here, this compound is our morphine, right? So morphine is an op opiate which is used for relieving pain. It's a really, really good opiate. But the problem it's very addictive right it belongs to opioids but if you use acetic anhydride what can acetic anhydride do is it can lead to acetylation so if you see these oh groups one oh over here and the other oh over here if i do acetylation using acetic anhydride i get this compound over here and this is a very very uh, harmful compound it's it's being used for recreational drugs like it's a Ill illegal compound and it's being used by a lot of people you must have heard of it heroin right it's a very powerful drug and it has also led to, led to many many deaths due to drug overdose so it's a very potent and lethal mole molecule it's called heroin which is abused a lot in nowadays by a lot of people so to avoid this in india acetic anhydride procurement is very very difficult because this acetylation process that is these oh groups in morphine can be see morphine can be easily procured uh, by people by the by these drug dealers or the, these drug makers and then they can easily use acetic anhydride to do the acetylation process obviously there are other reagents as well to do acetylation uh, but obviously these guys are not very trained right so they are used to one or the one procedure only so that's why they have banned acetic anhydride because it's very simple to do acetylation with the help of acetic anhydride now, uh, if I talk about one application of this, I'll talk about the mechanism. I want to make this video interesting. That's why I've kept the mechanism of this video at the last. I'm just discussing some interesting examples. So one example over here is this, uh, we have salicylaldehyde. This is a very simple compound. You can get it very easily. And to this, if we add acetic anhydride followed by sodium acetate, all right. And one more disadvantage over here is we are using solvents like organic solvents 
uh, which are hazardous right all organic solvents are quite hazardous to the nature almost all organic solvents so it's better if we can find a reaction with, which happens in water which i'm going to discuss the modern trends in perkin reaction so we add a sodium acetate which is a base and we add acetic anhydride and we get this intermediate over here right now this intermediate is not very stable this is again a, a cinnamic acid derivative you can see right and so this OH group what it does it has a lone pair of electrons it will go and attack this carbon it will go and attack this carbon over here right and this bond will migrate to form O minus then this O minus is going to migrate back and this this then this OH group is going to leave and once this OH group leaves it leads to OH minus and this OH minus will abstract one hydrogen from here so we'll get water as a byproduct and along with that we'll get this scaffold over here this scaffold or this molecule over here is called a cormorin now cormorins are very very important heterocyclic scaffolds and uh, they are very very you know useful in drug discovery many drugs are known which have this scaffold in it so it's a useful uh, way to synthesize cormorins right the perkin reaction now coming on to modern trends and the green synthesis of uh, perkin reaction so these were this reaction was uh, if you are interested to read the whole paper this was the paper which was published in green chemistry it says environmentally benign and energy efficient uh, methodology for condensation and interesting facet to the classic perkin reaction and these are the authors um, these are from institute of chemical technology in mumbai ict mumbai it's a very famous institute you must have heard of it so this was published in a very reputed journal that is green chemistry uh, in 2011 right so what they have done is first of all they have reduced the temperature so they have, they have brought down the temperature to 32 degrees celsius which is really interesting uh, they have avoided the use of any base they have not used any base for carrying out the same reaction right it's a classic reaction we are using a aldehyde aromatic aldehyde like benzaldehyde and we are using acetic anhydride but in this case we are not adding any base all right and the temperatures required are very very moderate right 32 degrees celsius if i talk about india it's obviously room temperature only 32 degrees celsius is room temperature in india and they're using ionic liquids now ionic liquids are very very useful because first of all they are biodegradable and they are not toxic to the environment all right so that's why it's really beneficial to use ionic liquids in place of organic solvents so how did they make the ionic liquid uh, they took a molecule over here this is called a choline chloride right this molecule over here is called choline chloride and this is over here is urea so both of them are really environmental friendly and these two mixtures these two compounds choline chloride and um, your acetic and your sorry your urea they both were heated for 30 minutes at 80 degrees celsius right and you got des now what is des des is basically your ionic liquid it's called uh, uh um, i'm forgetting the uh, whole name but it's ut deep eutectic eutectic solvent okay des is called deep eutectic solvent so it's a specific kind of ionic liquid and it's very easy to synthesize like i told you you just need urea and you need your uh, choline chloride and you just heat it for 30 minutes at 80 degrees celsius and you get your ionic liquid and then you can use this ionic liquid as a solvent to carry out this particular reaction for more information you can go ahead and watch this video oh, sorry watch this uh, see this uh, uh, article all right now this is the mechanism now the mechanism looks to be very very big but it's actually very very simple uh, so we are adding a base this is the classic perkin reaction that i'm talking about so we have we are adding a base let's say we are adding sodium acetate and this is our acetic anhydride over here so the sodium acetate abstracts this hydrogen over here and once it abstracts this hydrogen then it leads to the formation of negative charge and due to resonance as, as you can see by the arrow we get an enolate kind of structure right then this O minus migrates back and then this negative charge attacks the carbonyl carbon which is electropositive in nature this is the second step right it attacks the uh, carbonyl carbon of the uh, aldehyde which is electrophilic in nature and then we get this kind of intermediate right O minus is formed over here now this O minus attacks the CO, the other CO, right? The other CO, it attacks the other CO. We have CO over here as well. So it, this O minus attacks that particular CO. And as a result, if you see over here, what, sorry. As a result, if you see over here, what we get is O minus over here and a six, it's, it's a six membered ring that is formed. This is an intermediate that is formed. 
then this O minus migrates back and uh, this bond gets broken the CO bond gets broken it reverts back over here again O minus is formed and this is the intermediate that we get right now this O minus attacks another molecule of acetic anhydride but instead of abstracting a proton now it attacks directly the carbonyl carbon of the anhydride right once it attacks the carbonyl carbon this this bond breaks up the CO bond breaks up and as a result this intermediate is formed okay this is the inter intermediate that is formed now uh, we have OH minus as well right now this OH minus what it does it abstracts the second proton of the acetic anhydride right the acetic anhydride if you see in the first step has two protons two hydrogens one hydrogen over here and the other hydrogen is also present which I have not shown um, so this OH minus now attacks the second hydrogen okay it, it attacks the second hydrogen and once it attacks the second hydrogen this bond again gets broken and this is the intermediate that is generated then your again your base attacks this carbonyl carbon once more and again O minus is formed then this O minus migrates back and you get this kind of intermediate this intermediate right and then you simply add acetic acid um, basically once your um, um, your ACO minus in the first step had abstracted a hydrogen so once this ACO minus abstracts that hydrogen it leads to the formation of acetic acid so now this is the final product and we, ha we are having acetic acid so this O minus will abstract this hydrogen the base will be regenerated <coughs> and then we will get this as the final product which is our cinnamic acid right so this is the whole mechanism and these are the important aspects of this reaction I hope you found this video useful. Thank you so much for watching. Do give me your feedback and thank you so much.